Okie dokie, here comes the trigonometry test review solutions video. First group of problems is just naming some exact values for some trig uh, functions there. Sine of pi thirds equals root 3 over 2. Remember, we're using exact values, rationalized denominators, no calculators. Um, cosine of negative 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. I've uh, got to know where that angle is and take the cosine of it. Tangent of 4 pi thirds is the square root of 3. Memorize this stuff. Secant of pi over 2, that's 1 over the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. 1 over 0 is undefined. It's not 0, it's undefined. Cosecant of 2 pi thirds is 1 over the sine of 2 pi thirds, which is root 3 over 2. So it's just the reciprocal of that, 2 over root 3, but we rationalize the denominator. Give us 2 root 3 over 3. Cotangent of negative pi thirds is negative root 3 over 3. Here's what it looks like. There's negative pi thirds. It's x over y, cosine over sine. When you do that little uh, division there, you get negative 1 over root 3, which we write in our mathematically polite manner over negative root 3 over 3. Moving on to the next problem, which is, strangely, number 3. If the tangent of a equals 5 thirds, find the sine of a and the secant of a. And we're using uh, quadrant one for tangent, uh, for um, angle A is in quadrant one. Let me shift over here for a second. So if uh, I'm going to use this identity right here um, to figure this out, I'm given the tangent as 5 thirds. So I'm going to replace the tangent squared of A with 5 thirds squared. 5 thirds squared plus 1 equals secant squared. That's what it looks like. So that's 25 over 9. 1 is 9 over 9. So that gives me 34 over 9. That's the secant squared. So I take the square root, and I get square root of 34 over 3 equals the secant of A. Now that means, which is good, that's one of the things I want, but that, what that means is that the cosine, which is the reciprocal, is 3 over square root of 34. Well, I can use that in my other identity to find sine. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. The cosine is this number. I square it plus sine squared equals 1. So I'm going to do a little bit of uh, subtraction there. That number squared is 9 over 34. 1 minus 9 over 34 equals 25 over 34. Okay, because I'm thinking of the 1 as 34 over 34. Anyway, uh, I take the square root of that. That gives me 5 over the square root of 34, and which I, again, rationalize the denominator to that. So there's my two answers. Since everything's in quadrant 1, and everything's positive. So there we go. There's the sine of A, and there's the secant of A. Okie doke. Uh, if sine of x equals negative one half, what are two possible radian values for x? That would be down here where the y value is negative one half. That's seven pi over six and eleven pi over six. Okie doke. Here's our other two trigonometric identities. We already used one, um, and then here's the other one: cotangent and cosecant. Okay, very similar structure. Then uh, tangent of theta equals negative two. And theta is in quadrant 2, find the sine and the cosine. Okay, so again, I'm going to use this identity right here. Tangent squared means negative 2 squared plus 1 equals secant squared. Well, that's positive 4. Plus 1 is 5. Square root of that is square root of 5. Why is it negative square root? Because it's in quadrant 2. And in quadrant 2, cosines are negative, And that means secants are also negative. So it's negative square root of 5. Okay? Um, that's good. That's the secant. I actually want the cosine, which is the reciprocal of secant. So um, it would be the reciprocal of that number, 1 over uh, root 5. So that's just negative root 5 over 5 for the cosine. Now I'm going to take that, put it in my other trigonometric identity, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Um, I work that through here. I get sine squared equals 4 over 5, or the sine is 2 over square root of 5, or 2 root 5 over 5, and it's positive because in quadrant 2, sine is positive. Let's go on to the next problem. Um, similar kind of problem. If the secant is 5 thirds and of b, as in, is in 5 thirds, and b is in quadrant 4, what's the tangent of b? Well, that equation right there, tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared, would be very helpful. If I have the secant and I want the tangent, what i got to do is solve this for tangent. It's not too bad. 25 over 9. Um, minus 1, that's 16 over 9. I take the square root of that, that's 4 over 3, but in quadrant 4, tangent is a negative value, so it's negative 4 over 3. Moving on. Uh, the two graphs here, right? Two different functions. Okay, so if for each, so in this first graph, I see my amplitude is the y value there from 2 down to negative 2, so the amplitude is 2. Um, my 
uh, I have no vertical shift or horizontal shift. It starts at zero, zero. If it went up, that means positive sign. But my period is four. If that maximum happens at one, then the next uh, point right there, that's, that's one fourth of the cycle. So that means the cycle is four units long. Their period is four. That means k is two pi over four, or pi over two. So my equation for sine is two times sine of pi over two times x. Now, if I want to write a cosine equation for the same curve, everything stays the same except my horizontal shift. Uh, now I'm going to pick that point as the beginning of one cycle. For sine, the beginning is right there on the midline going up. But for cosine, it's the maximum point. So the x value of that maximum point is positive 1. So that's my horizontal shift. But the amplitude and this k value stay exactly the same. Okay, so there's the cosine equation. A little bit trickier one here for part B. Um, same basic idea, though. My, um, if I look at this, the amplitude is 1 half. And the period is actually 1. From negative 1 third to positive 2 thirds, that's a total distance of 1. So that's the period. And then the, the k value is 2 pi over the period, or just 2 pi. Um, I'm starting over here at negative um, 1 third. So that's my, for a sine value, that's the beginning of one cycle, that b equals negative 1 third. So I put all of that into the equation, 1 half for the amplitude, sine, and then it's 2 pi times x minus negative 1 third. That is plus 1 third right there, x plus 1 third. I hope you can see that. The cosine equation will use the x coordinate of that point, which is a little bit tricky, and just to spare us a little bit of time, I figured out that that, that is negative 1 twelfth. The period is 1, so all I did was take um, a fourth of 1, which is 1 fourth, and add it to negative 1 third. So one, negative 1 third plus 1 fourth gives me negative 1 twelfth. That's my um, locator, or my beginning of one cycle for cosine, but everything else, amplitude, k and everything stayed the same. So there's my cosine equation. We're going to flip it over now and look at number 9 up there. Write sine in terms of cosine where theta is an angle in quadrant 3. Well, there's my equation. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. All I'm doing basically is solving that for sine. I'm writing sine in terms of cosine. So sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. I take the square root. It's the square root of 1 minus cosine squared and the reason that negative sign is there is only because my angle is in quadrant 3 where sine is negative. Okay, next problem. Uh, name the period frequency amplitude for this function, okay? There's k, 300 pi. Well, 2 pi over 300 pi is the same as 1 over 150, so that's the period. That's how long one cycle is, 1 150th. The frequency is the reciprocal of that, so that makes 150. That's pretty easy. Amplitude is just the number right there, and it's always that, it's always positive, so the amplitude is 50. In Bern, Switzerland, the big clock in the, in the middle of town, um, we've spoken about this in class. The center of the clock is 28 meters above the ground. The minute hand is three and a half meters long, which means that the tip of the minute hand ranges from a height of 31 and a half meters at noon uh, to, um, what would that be, 28 minus 3.5 is 24.5 meters at like, um, you know, at, at, at half the hour, when it's pointing at the 6, the very lowest point. But the curve sort of looks like this, with 28 being our vertical shift. Our amplitude um, is 3.5, that's the length of the hand, and our period from 0 to 60, so period is 60, um, so that means 2 pi over 60 is pi over 30, Amplitude 3.5, vertical shift of 28, and so there's our equation. Um, using cosine again, right, because we're starting at the maximum. It says where 0 equals 12 o'clock noon, that means 0 on the x-axis is 12 o'clock, and so that would be at the maximum point. So that means we are using a cosine curve. Okay, so there's our function. The next part says what is the height of the minute hand at 2.15, which is at the quarter hour, and you can sort of figure, well, that's it, we're at the quarter at 3, so it's going to be at the same height as the center of the clock. It's 28 meters. But you could do this other thing where you plug it in, right? Here's our equation. And if I plug in 15 for x at 15 minutes, 2.15, that's 15 minutes after the hour. So it's like x equals 15. And if I plug that in for x right here, pi over 30 times 15, this thing right here, pi over 30 times 15, gives me actually pi over 2. Right, if I multiply that out, 
Well, so it's 3.5 times the cosine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So that's 3.5 times 0, which of course is 0, which and then this 28 is just kind of sitting there, and that's all you got left. So yeah, it's 28 meters above the ground at 215. Graphing one cycle here, this is what your graph should look like for number 12, the first part. Okay, it's got a vertical shift of 2. Um, it's a negative sign, so it has this kind of a shape right here. Um, the period is pi, and so here's your uh, length of one cycle with your x-axis scaled appropriately. It goes up to a maximum of 5 and down to a minimum of negative 1. And our next one, it's a positive cosine, so it has that shape. It's shifted to the left one unit. X plus 1 means shift to the left one unit. Our period is 2 pi over pi thirds, which works out to being 6. So the period is 6. But if it starts at negative 1 and I add 6 to that, I end up at 5. So the end of one cycle is at positive 5. And um, so that's basically what it looks like. I don't know if you can tell, but that's a 2. So the minimum point is at x equals 2. Um, these halfway points, or 1 fourth and 3 fourths points, excuse me, happen at 1 half and 3 and a half. And that's what that looks like. Our next, our last problem here about putting these in the table, I did figure out what the value of each of those was. Tangent of pi thirds is root 3. Cosine of pi thirds is 1 half. Sine of 7 pi 6 is negative 1 half. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And so putting those order, those numbers in uh, from lowest to uh, least to greatest, negative 1 is the least of them. So, and then there's negative 1 half. And then 0 and then uh, one half, and then square root of three. So that's what it looks like um, for the table. Okay, good. Bye-bye. Have a good rest of your day.